In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. The Gospel today presents us with a story which we hear several times through the year in the versions as told by several of the evangelists. And there are a great many stories which are told a number of times by different evangelists, but for most of those, only one will be chosen as a Sunday reading. And so the frequency with which we hear this story in one version or another on Sunday indicates that there's something very important going on here. And one reason, perhaps, why we need to hear this story so often is that this beginning of the story with these demon-possessed men living out in the tombs conveys this predicament of humanity and the world in the clutches of evil which we so often see around us. And we have, as the story goes along, a reminder of where allowing ourselves to be filled with this power of evil leads as the swine are filled with the demons and immediately plunge over the cliff to their destruction. And so we remember that being filled with sin with the power of the evil one leads ultimately to destruction. But we have in this story a lesson which is even more important than this, which is of Christ's power which is greater than that of the evil one, so much greater that they have to beg him even to enter the herd of swine. And in the exorcisms at the beginning of the baptismal service, we recall this when we rebuke the devil as the one who had no power even over swine. And so as we face this power of evil which so often seems to fill our lives, we remember the one who has a power greater than this and before whose power sin, evil, death, the devil have no authority and no power at all. And in the epistle reading, we're reminded that knowing Christ to be the one who has power over that which afflicts us, we do not say, who shall ascend into heaven to bring Christ down, or who shall descend into the depths to bring Christ up. We do not seek Christ as one who is in some faraway place that we must seek out. But we're reminded that the Word of God, we know of course that the Word of God is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is near to you in your heart, in your lips. And this is echoing what Christ himself says when he says, the kingdom of God is within you to those who are seeking him. And this is why so many of the fathers of the church, when they speak of prayer, speak of seeking God by turning our attention not upward or to some faraway place, but inward into our own hearts, because through the grace of baptism and of the sacraments in the life of the church, through our own acceptance of Christ into our hearts, he dwells there within us, and he is near to us in all of our struggles with those things which oppose him and which oppose us. And so when we are confronted with sin, with evil, with corruption in our lives, we seek the Lord who is already with us, and we remember as these things threaten to define us that it is the Lord within us who makes us truly who we are and our identity is found not in these sins which seek to rule our lives and which would rule our lives to our own destruction but most of all in the power and the glory and the grace of the Lord who dwells within us and so we hear in this epistle reading that if we believe with our heart and confess with our mouth 
the Lord who is near to us, who is within us, then by this we will be saved. And this believing with our hearts, this confession with our mouth, is not a casual acceptance of some ideas, a casual repetition of some formal statements, and then going on with our lives, much as we did before, but a transformation of our hearts, being filled with the grace of the one who dwells already within us, and allowing his grace to fill our hearts and to transform our hearts, becoming a belief which is not one more thing that we believe alongside all of the other things that we think or believe, but something which transforms our whole experience, our whole perception of the world, which transforms our whole way of seeing the world. We see the world now not according to lust, hatred, greed, anger, but according to the purity, the love, the mercy of Christ our Lord. And if we nurture these things, the things of Christ and not the things of the evil one, then we become like the disciples filled with the grace of the Spirit and the risen Christ whose confession with the mouth was not an idle word but a proclamation filled with the power of the Spirit proclaiming the glad tidings with great power as we say in the liturgy before the Gospel so that their words did not fall idly from their mouths but sank also into the hearts of those who heard them so that in every city where they went and preached, many were converted to following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so in what we nurture in our hearts, by our words, by our thoughts and by our actions, we are presented with this choice. We can become like the men living out alone in the tombs, like the swine plunging to their death from the cliff, or like these apostles, filled with the grace and power of God, which pours out from their hearts through their mouths into all the world, bringing transformation, light, and life to all those around them. Or, of course, we may become like the inhabitants of the city, who, having seen this great wonder of these men whom they feared, who lived down in the tombs, being restored to life, and seeing also their occupation contrary to the law which had been given to their fathers by God, being taken away from them, preferred the comfort of sending away the Lord who demanded this transformation of them to the work of giving up those things by which they had defined themselves and this redefinition according to the love and the grace of Christ. And this is always the fear that we should have that when the Lord comes to us and as the Lord is already drawn near to us, as the Lord is already dwelling within us, that we might by our actions by preferring a way of life contrary to that which he proclaims, that we might send him away to continue living our own life, not realizing that the life which we live leads to the loneliness of the men dwelling away from society in the tombs, and ultimately to the destruction of the swine filled with the demons. And so, let us ever remember the Lord who dwells already within our hearts and seeks constantly to fill them, to transform them, and to empower them to pour forth words of life, deeds of life, and a life transformed by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, filling all the world with his light his love and his grace.
Him be the glory, now and ever, to the ages of ages. Amen.